Uh, if you've got food or drinks or whatever, feel free to bring them in. Uh, we're going to spend about the next hour talking about uh, the DevNet Sandbox. If you would like to play along, you, all that you need to do to, uh, to, to, to go through the same motions I am is a, uh, a connected web device. Could be your laptop, could be a tablet, whatever. Uh, the only requirement for everything I'm going to show you is that you have registered at DevNet. So if you haven't done that, developer.cisco.com, register. Um, and I'm going to go through some slides so you'll have time to do that. So once we go into the sandbox, you can drive along with me. Um, one of the things I request is when we go in there, don't reserve any labs right now because uh, we have a whole bunch of people hitting it simultaneously. Uh, it, it probably won't be good for the system. Uh, so what I'd like to do is let's just dry, go through it. I'm going to show everybody uh, how things work. And then at your leisure, please feel free to go in and do it on your own and make reservations as you wish. Um, I did a session yesterday morning uh, over on the main stage, just a, a quick introduction on the sandbox. Were any of you there? Okay, well that's good, because I'm going to go through a set of slides that sort of is, is introductory. Um, it's sort of a scaled down version of what I showed yesterday, but at least it's going to give you some context um, and the reason we have put together sandbox. Um, and then probably about the last two thirds of the hour, I'm actually going to go in and drive it and show you guys how to take full advantage of everything there. All right, so this is what we're going to go through real quick. I'm going to just discuss what, what the sandbox is, why it's put in place, and what problems we're trying to solve. There's a couple of different lab models uh, that I'll want to describe. It'll be important for you all to understand those lab models. Um, we have implemented some IVT testing through the sandbox. Uh, that might be interesting to some people, so I'm going to give a quick overview of that. Uh, I'll make sure you know exactly how to get into the sandbox and, and you know, go explore yourselves. And then, like I said, we'll spend uh, a good portion of this session actually going through and driving it. All right, so this is the sandbox goal. We want to enable developers to do the things that developers do. And what we're doing to enable that is providing developers robust, ready environments to go do that. Because to be honest with you, most developers have no interest at all in building labs building an environment. You can go do that. You can go download your VM and go procure some routers and switches, and then if you need network traffic generation. But all that stuff is hard, right? And it's expensive, and it takes time. If you want to go out and develop today, we're going to provide you the labs. You can go jump in and do that. Now, what do de developers go in to develop? Sometimes it's a full-blown product. But sometimes it's like, hey, I saw this really cool API over here. I just want to go make some REST calls, see what, see what it looks like. Or, hey, I just want to throw together a proof of concept to see if my idea sort of hangs together. Let me go try that somewhere, not in my production environment. Let me go try it over here, and then, all right, that all held together. I'm going to go build the real thing. You could do it in Sandbox, or you could, you know, at that point, go, go do it wherever you want. But what we're trying to do is enable the developers to have those environments so that you don't have to go through the pain of building those yourself. So again, we have designed this specifically in the environments to do these sorts of things. Like I said, just to explore. You're not really building anything, you just want to look around all the way to full development and test. All right, what can you do in the sandbox? Just try stuff out. You walk into a lab, you're like, I don't really know what this technology is, or, uh, hey, I just want to try something. You can just go kick the tires, whatever. It's a safe environment. You can go configure something and totally screw it up, and uh, there's no consequences, right? A lot of times, people want to come in, and they have a product, and they just want to test it against different environments. That's perfectly fine, too. Get early access. That's sort of a big one. We will be providing access to the Cisco technologies and the new versions of uh, the APIs as soon as we can make them available. So oftentimes, you can get early access to code here before you can get it realistically from other places. So 
that's a big one. A lot of times people will be like, hey, I've got to go get on the next version of it. Sandbox is the first place you can go get that. Collaboration. One of the great things about the labs that I'm going to show you is the ability to collaborate with other people on your team. You might need to, you might be developing and you might have some sort of error you don't understand. You're like, hey, Joe would know what this is. You can go invite Joe into the same lab that you're in and Joe can be working in the exact same environment and it doesn't matter if Joe's down the hall or on another continent. So you can invite people into your labs. They're private to you until you invite someone else in. But anyway, we allow that collaboration in case you want to have more than one person on your team come in. Um, and completing an IVT, I'm going to go into more on that in a minute. All right, so Sandbox is always on. It's available 24-7. Um, and it's self-service. You don't need to interact with any Cisco employee. Like I said, all you have to do is, is register at DevNet, and these labs are available to you. Right now, we have 34 publicly available labs. This time last year at Cisco Live, we had four. So we are turning these things up at a furious pace, um, and we, we plan on continuing to do so. So keep up with us. If, you're, if, if we're not offering a technology or an environment that you know, is interesting to you, keep checking back, because um, like I said, we're, we're providing these things and turning them up very, very quickly. And we're trying to hit all of the Cisco technologies that uh, folks are interested in, and right now we have a lab covering each of those technologies. All right, I've talked about most of these um, text updates especially in the IVT labs, to actually, uh, well, a lot of the labs, to provision the labs, we have to spin up some VMs or do some, some testing. And so from the time the lab starts, your reservation starts until it's actually ready for you to come in, it might be a half hour or so before it's ready. We'll, we will always send you an email when your lab is ready for you to, to access. But if you're headed out to lunch or you're headed to a meeting, you can sign up for text updates um, it says, oh, oh, my lab's ready. I can go work on that when I get back uh, in, at my desk. Most of the labs have virtual machines in them. You can do what you want to on, on those machines. They're sort of provided for your convenience. And all of the labs, which I'll show you, have a lot of in-lab guidance. So there's the main lab, and then there's a whole instruction pane off to the left where it's going to give you more information about your lab and then lots of good links into the DevNet site and support forums and anything you might need to get uh, more information about that lab. All right, different lab models. The first lab model we have is always on. And this is going to be a shared environment. And what that means is, is that there's no reservation required. We're just going to provide you the information to log into the server or the resource that you need. Um, and it is likely that other people will be on that same system at the same time. You'll likely never know it. Um, you don't have administrative control over those systems. So the chances of any information sharing is, is almost zero. Typically, those systems, you're just going to be making restful calls uh, to some of the APIs. Um, but they're shared environments. So those particular labs do not have a reserve button. They are, are indicated, by, and it says always on. The other uh, lab model is, is the typical use case is when you want to reserve an environment exclusively for your use for the duration of the reservation. So what will happen is, is well, again, that's a private environment. Nobody's in there but you unless you invite somebody else in. And in that environment, you have administrative control over all or most of the devices in there. So you can go and reconfigure routers and switches and change policies and, and, and whatever you want to do in there because um, you have an administrative control over the lab. So those are typically used for more uh, you know, heavy duty developing and uh, integration sort of testing. So we'll go through and I'll show you uh, examples of each of those in a second. This is just a pictorial view of uh, the two lab models I showed you. So over here, we have an always on lab different people from different companies accessing the same resource. You're typically not going to know anybody else is, is accessing at the same time. By, by and large, this is our typical use case. Uh, one person in one lab, but you have the option to invite other users who are registered from your same company 
to be in the lab at the same time. All right, so when you make a reservation in a uh, reservation-based lab, here's the process flow. You go and find the lab you want, and you hit the reserve button. At that point, you're gonna fill out uh, and define your reservation period. So your reservation could start now, or it could start uh, next Monday when you get back to the office. So some time may pass, and then the reservation begins. From the time the reservation begins, there's actually, uh, for most of these labs, we have to spin up some things. We're gonna, probably gonna provision some VMs. Uh, we're gonna do some testing. So there's gonna be a lag from the time the reservation starts until you get the next email that says, hey, your lab's ready. Again, it can be 15 to 30 minutes or so, but, but you'll get that next email that says, all right, your lab's ready now. When it's ready, we will send you an email with VPN credentials. So at that point, you can VPN into your lab and you are connected to it and have exclusive access to that lab. So you're sitting in front of your system at your desk and you are now connected to the lab uh, that Cisco is hosting and you can do uh, whatever you want to with the resources in it. And we'll, we're gonna go through that process of actually connecting to one of those labs a little bit later. All right, I'm gonna go over the IVT process real quick. Um, I know this doesn't apply to all of you. The IVT process or the testing is uh, when you go get a Cisco compatible logo for your product. So you have to go through and uh, run through the test plan, pass all the testing before Cisco will issue you, you that badge, that Cisco compatible badge. Um, this is the uh, sort of the model that we have always had is you go to your partner dashboard and you say, you say I would like to uh, get a, a third party IVT test done. You pay the third party a certain amount of money. They schedule the lab for you when it's, a, it's available and their engineer runs your product through the testing and then you come out with a Cisco compatible logo. What we've done in Sandbox is we have, are giving you an alternate path and to actually run this, uh, this testing within the sandbox. And this is how this looks, is you're just gonna submit for a sandbox IVT. Instead of just purchasing, um, instead of purchasing it from the third party vendor, you're just gonna purchase lab time. So in that lab, you'll be able to run through and do the IVT testing yourself. You make the lab reservation at your convenience, and the, the point here is you are executing the test plan. So within the lab, we provide you the test plan, um, and then there's commands in the lab, everything that we can automate. The test plan will say, connect your devices like this, run command one. Our automation will go and do the testing we need to, come back to you when human intervention is required and say, okay, now we need you to go do X, Y, Z, now run command two. So you'll do those sorts of things. Um, at the end, we will have collected through the automation all of the information that we require. Um, and then if your product passes the, the, the test criteria, you'll also come up with, the, uh, with a compatible logo. So the big differences here are, when you go through the sandbox process, it's about half the cost of the traditional third party process. So a lot of our partners are very price sensitive and would rather use their engineering time to run through the test plan, and so that's a huge advantage for some folks. Another big advantage, which I've indicated by the calendar here, is this particular model. Um, you do not have a whole lot of control over the timing of things. Right now, when you submit for an IVT through the third-party labs, it's gonna take anywhere from six weeks to six months before they can get you in the queue and run your test. If you need to get to market, faster uh, with that Cisco, Cisco compatibility logo, that's gonna be a real pain point. Right now, we can get you to market a lot quicker by going through uh, the sandbox process. Um, I think I've talked to most of these. Again, uh, reduced cost if you're price sensitive. We're using, utilizing a lot of automation. We will invariably be able to get you that, that compatibility logo quicker. Um, and again, it's provided as a choice. You can choose one or the other. If you just want to have somebody go do it and uh, let you know when, when your product is ready, that's fine. 
If you want to go through the sandbox process, that's fine too. So again, it's just provided as a choice. All right, so I'm going to give you fairly explicit instructions about how to get into the sandbox um, and make sure if anybody has any questions, and then I'm going to go start driving and, and showing you guys around. So, like I said, the first requirement is, is that you have to be registered at DevNet. So most of the people, when they come and talk to me over at the Sandbox booth, they say, well, how much is all this? How much does it cost to reserve lab time? And it doesn't cost anything. Right now, all the labs are provided as a free service, with the exception of the IVT labs I just talked about. But that's because you're coming out and you're getting that Cisco compatibility logo. Everything else is free. Register at DevNet, everything I'm going to show you here is free. All right, so after you've registered, so this is the, the, the DevNet homepage. There's two ways to get there, Sandbox up on the top. There's a cute little picture of Sandbox down here. That will take you to this blue page. There's a lot of good information about the Sandbox on that page. Go ahead and take a look around there. But if you just want to go look at the lab catalog, uh, hit the yellow button and you will be taken to directly to the lab catalog. And so we call each of these a tile in our catalog and behind each of those tiles is a lab um, which you can go, we'll, we'll go explore and, and I'll show you how to go navigate through that. All right, when and how can I access the sandbox? Like I said, all you need is a web connected device. You can do it by the pool, you can do it at your office, you can do it on your couch at home. Um, new lab offerings, I was telling you that we will always be trying to get the, the latest versions of software out there as fast as possible. The fastest way to be up to date on those is just to follow us on Twitter. So it's at DevNet under Sandbox. If you follow us there, just check in. We will always be making the announcements for the latest and greatest uh, Sandbox offerings so you can keep up to date with us there. All right, let's, uh, let's go drive this. All right, so here we are on the front page. I go to the labs. If I click go to labs, I'm going to end up here. Now, you can see I ha we currently have 36 labs, and each of those, those tiles just represents a different lab. So you can, you can use this view, but it's, sometimes it's hard to find, oh, I'm just interested in collaboration, or I'm just interested uh, in networking. So the first thing you'll want to do is come over here to this side, and you can filter the labs based on the technology you're interested in. So if I just want to go look at the networking labs, it will go and it will filter just the networking. Uh, so that's a great way to go and sort of search some of the noise if you're looking for something very specific. Um, one of the things that I don't like about the UI and we're working on getting fixed is once you're in this, you have sorted by a technology, it needs to be more obvious how to get back to the full view. It's actually this button up here, back to the Sandbox Lab catalog. So if I'm like, okay, I want to go back and see everything. I don't want to look at networking anymore. You got to go there. I wish it were back on this side and we're working on getting that fixed. All right, some of these labs will say it contains a resource that is currently unavailable. So a lot of these labs have physical hardware in them. Um, so uh, we can only spin up one instance of that lab. Some of the labs are purely virtualized and we can spin up any number of instances of the, that lab. The ones that have real hardware and they're already in a, an active reservation you'll see contains a resource that's currently unavailable. So if you are like, well, I just want to see the labs that I can reserve right now, there's a filter on the left. You can click on available. And now you'll only see the labs that are truly available right now. 
I don't know exactly why you would want to do this, but you can also choose, show me just the unavailable labs. All right, so once you've filtered, I'm going to go ahead and filter on networking again. Once you've filtered on the technology that, that, that you're interested in, um, there is some description under each lab about what's in there. A lot of time, there, there, there's really not enough real estate there to, to do a full description of it. Um, so sometimes the best way is just to click on the lab, and that'll take you into the lab. So at that point, you can see the topology and the resources that are in the lab. So I just clicked on the APIC EM Mini Lab 1, and we have four of those APIC Mini Labs. And so this is just a pictorial representation of the equipment that's in the lab. So this particular lab, we actually have uh, six physical devices. We've got some routers and we've got some switches. These are actually physical machines, I believe. I think that's true. Um, and then this over here is a, is a VM that we will spin up once you actually make that reservation. Um, and so that will turn into your APIC controller. You'll notice that each of these has an IP address listed. And the way you get more information about a device is if you mouse over the, the picture, that little button there to the left says attributes. You click on that. And depending on what attributes uh, we are exposing about that device, they will show up here on the right. So for instance, that particular device, you have the IP address, and we're actually going to show you and present to you the administrative passwords. You can't do anything with it yet. You don't have the lab reserved. You don't know how to connect to the lab yet. Um, but after you connect to it and you VPN into the lab, you can go configure that anything on that device you want. You are administrator on that device. All right, let's talk a little bit about, uh, about this left-hand pane. Uh, on this screen, it's cut off a little bit. I apologize. What we're going to do is we're going to provide you just an overview of what's in the lab, what sort of things you might do in the lab, how you're going to access the lab. Um, and then at the bottom of every single lab, we're going to provide lots of additional, we're going to provide additional links to go get lots of additional information. Um, so we're in an APIC lab, so this will take you to the APIC EM portal on DevNet. Um, if you have API questions, that'll actually take you to the APIC forum. So if, you are, if, you're, uh, if you're interfacing with that APIC controller and you're like, I don't understand what's coming back, go post your question. And then uh, on every single one, you also have uh, sandbox support. So if you think something in the sandbox is, is not functioning the way you expect it to or you just have questions, that'll take you to that forum. Most of these forums are, are monitored uh, most of the time, so typically you'll get very fast response um, if, you, if you post questions there. A lot of times for the, uh, for the uh, information pane over there, there will be multiple tabs. So instead of having to scroll through from, from one uh, up and down, for all that information there. We put it in tabs, so just make sure you don't miss the tabs. All right, some of the labs have commands embedded in them. So if you click on commands right here, it'll show you the commands that are available within that lab. Now, all, all, command, or all labs have setup and teardown. Typically, don't want to execute those. We executed setup when you reserve the lab, and we're going to execute teardown uh, when your lab reservation is over. If you reserve it and you hit tear down, we're going we're gonna to tear down everything in there. And your reservation is still going to be active, but your lab's not going to be available to you. So by and large, don't, don't play with setup and tear down. Um, some of our labs have uh, Ixia traffic generators in them. So you can uh, start and stop traffic. So those are some of the commands that we provide. And again, in the IVT labs, 
uh, there's going to be a whole list, long list of commands to execute there. So that's where you find the commands. All right. There's a couple more buttons here that are relatively useful. These right here are your zoom level. By default, it comes in this middle one. Some of our topologies have a lot of resources in them, and you're not going to be able to view everything you want. So you can hit the box with smaller, uh, smaller cells in it, and we will just give you smaller representations. Or you can hit the large one. and you'll get very large representations. By and large, for most of our labs, uh, I would recommend staying with the default middle one. All right, so let's go through and go through the process of of reserving a lab. So let's say that I uh, went to this lab and I said, yeah, this looks like the lab for me. I want to go explore with this. I just want to make some API calls to the APIC controller or whatever it is. This is the lab for me. There's going to be a reserve button right there. I am not going to go through the process of reserving because like I said, sometimes these labs take 15 or more minutes to spin up. So I have already uh, I have a lab with a reservation in it. And after I hit the reserve button, I'm going to get three emails. The first email looks like this. And the amount of information that's useful in here to you uh, is fairly small. It would help us if, if something went wrong. It shows all the resources within the lab. Um, more information about start and stop times. By and large, is there anything in here that you're going to want to consume? Probably not. We might, might need this information if something goes wrong or we need to troubleshoot something. But that first uh, email that comes by, it's just an indication of, oh yeah, my reservation started. Because if you set up for a reservation that's going to start the middle of next week, you may not remember, oh yeah, at noontime on Wednesday, my reservation started. So this is just going to indicate to you that uh, that your reservation has started. Pretty much at the same time, you're going to get this email, and it says, okay, your reservation started, but it's not ready yet. We're spinning up the lab. So we're spinning up the VMs, we're doing the testing we need to do, and we're going to provide you with a couple of links. Most of the labs require, um, require you to VPN connect to them, so we're going to provide two links here. Here's how you go download the AnyConnect VPN client. So this will take you to a DevNet site, and you can go download VPN, uh, sorry, AnyConnect for your, for your OS. And for some, some people, they might need a little help on the installation of AnyConnect. Oop. So we have a full installation guide for installing AnyConnect as well. So again, this is going to come before uh, your lab has been provisioned. So if the first time, if you need to go set those things up, that would be the perfect time to do it. All right, the third email that you're going to receive is the one where you can start doing something. And it says, all right, your lab is ready. Let's get going. Again. We provide you with those, uh, those links again that says here's how you get AnyConnect set up. The important information that you're going to need is in this middle section right here. We have it highlighted in red for the most part. So you're going to need the lab network address, your username, and the password for that lab. After that, uh, we provide a couple of help links. If you had any questions or any issues with any of this, uh, these are going to be uh, links to get help with AnyConnect. We provide you a link to PuTTY if that's how you, you choose to interact with some of these labs. And then, again, if you had, have uh, questions in general, here's the uh, community forum for the Sandbox. So again, this is the third email you're going to get. It's going to give you 
uh, basically the go ahead to go log into your lab. So I am going to go fire up AnyConnect. So the first thing I need is that lab network address. I'm just going to put that right there and say connect. All right, the next things that you'll need to fill in are these two fields. Your username. And that password. All right, so I am now VPN into that lab. If you'll give me just a second, I am actually not, I don't have that particular lab up. And I'm going to come back and uh, in a second go over the uh, go over how you go and 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 navigate this reservations dashboard. Okay, so this is going to be a representation of the lab I uh, I actually reserved and spun up earlier. So you can see that it ran setup and it completed. I did that about four hours ago this morning. So that's no longer interesting. Oh dear. I misclicked, sorry, give me a second. Okay, I hope that's large enough so you all can see. So now I am VPN connected to this lab, and let's say that I want to, I actually want to go and log into the APIC controller. So we have named the VM my username under APIC EM. Here's the IP address. So let's go fire this up. Actually, the first thing I need to do, I'm sorry. So I have the IP address here, and I'm going to go into the, uh, the, the web interface for this device. So it's 10.10.10.103, since I'm already connected to that lab. All I have to do is, is enter the IP address. You'll probably get a security exception. Just go ahead and, and pass on through that. All right, so this web page is actually being served by your APIC EM controller. So we provide the, the uh, login right here in red. So again, this is my APIC EM controller in that lab, and I can now go interact with it and do all of the things that are available through this interface, through that controller. 
And so most of the, most of the labs work similarly. Some of the labs are gonna have just SSH interfaces. A lot of them will have an HTTP interface. Um, and uh, typically you'll find that information uh, in, in one of the help sections. So anyway, there's uh, information about your APIC controller. Let's say that I wanna go configure this device right here. So if I mouse over this device and click on that one that says attributes, I now have uh, the credentials to log in there. So I'm gonna fire up Putty. and I am logged into that device as administrator, that device right there. So again, in, in these reservation-based labs, I, uh, I can log in to most of the devices in there and configure them how I want, uh, have access to what I want in that lab. Now, uh, some of the questions that come up are, well, I don't like that topology. I want things to, to look like this, or can I drag in another element? Um, that's something that we don't provide. Like I said, these are real devices, and so there's in a rack somewhere, really cabled up, so there's no way through you know, a software interface to modify that. Uh, we do have labs that are, are VMs only, um, but there, there's really no topology that goes along with that. So, in the, in the labs where you might want to have more than one topology, uh, we try to provide multiple labs. So for instance, this APIC lab, we have uh, four mini labs, each with a different topology. We have a, a, a large lab, it has like 30 some odd nodes, uh, if you're doing a large scale work. And then we have uh, two labs that are just the APIC controller, and so you can play with the database. Okay, so I have shown you examples of how I connect with every device in this lab. So if I wanna go and st now start writing some Python or whatever my, my programming language of choice is, I can go do that on my laptop, in my office, and I can connect and interact through my, my program with anything up on this, up on this diagram. All right, I want to back up for just a minute and, uh, and go over the reservations. So let's say I made a, made a reservation, and uh, it's the next day I went home, I closed my browser, and I come back in, and I want to connect to that diagram again. Or I want to be able to view that diagram So this main page provides two different views. The first one, which you're gonna see by default, is the catalog view. And that would be the sandbox labs. So there's two ways that you can toggle between your catalog view and the reservations. So right now, we're gonna show sandbox labs is gonna show that. If you wanna get the reservations view, you can click there. And it's also provided by mousing over this lab management. Exact same thing, sandbox labs or reservations. So by default, you're gonna show up here, and if you'll notice, this APIC uh, Mini Lab 4, you guys probably can't read it, but this says, currently reserved by me. Uh, the part that's non-intuitive about this, you're like, oh, that's reserved by me, let me go click it. Problem is, is that's just gonna show you the lab topology again, that's not your lab. You actually have to go through the reservations interface to get to your lab, to your instance of that lab. Because any, anybody else could be coming and seeing, oh, that particular thing. If you click on that lab tile, 
That's just showing you an example of the topology. So let me show you how to go get to your lab. Again, two ways to do it. You can choose reservations here or click on reservations here. Now there's two reservation views uh, and it's just personal preference on how you want to view them. Sometimes people will go and make multiple reservations in different labs uh, over time and so they want to see, all right, when is my next reservation coming up and they want to see the timeline view. So this is just a list view. I made two reservations uh, earlier in the week. They're down here, they're indicated by black that those reservations are over. Uh, a reservation that is indicated here in green says it's active and it says it's going to end in, in another eight hours. So that's, the, that's the, the one we were just in. So if I want to navigate to that, let's bring it up in a new tab right now. A couple of things will indicate to me that this is my reserve lab. One is the green button up here, it says active. That's only gonna say active if you're in a lab that you have reserved. The other indication is, is this VM right here is gonna have your username under technology name. That means that, that VM is spun up. So that VM is active in that lab. All right, so this is the list view of your reservations. Like I said, some people want to look at reservations in a timeline view. So this is your list view. There's your timeline view. So what this is showing me is, uh, I think, a month representation. That's why they're all so small. So you, have, you can uh, scale the view here on the timeline by day, week, or month right up here. So if I click on day, if I click on today, it will center it. So there's my reservation I made uh, at 11 today, and it will end sometime tonight. If I have multiple reservations over the course of a week, you can see I had another short reservation. I was doing a demo earlier, and I did that on Tuesday afternoon. And then here's my Wednesday reservation. OK, let's go and talk about when I actually go and reserve a lab, the options you have available for defining your reservation window. So I'm back at the catalog view, and again, even though this says it's reserved by me, I'm going to click on it again, and that's not going to take me to my active reservation. That's just a representation of the lab. All right, so maybe I want to reserve this again for Friday. I only reserved it for eight hours today, tomorrow I'm busy, Friday I'm going to reserve this again. So you hit the reserve button. I think we have quite a bit going on in the sandbox today. Things are a little slow. All right, so you'll get this box. So I'm gonna go through, there's a couple of options here. So it, by default, it, set, it gives you basically, hey, I'm gonna reserve this lab for two hours. I'll give you the name of the lab, and uh, this particular field right here, you don't want to change, because that defines which lab you're reserving. But two hours from now is not really what I want. So I can go and mouse over this, and now I have a lot more information, uh, a lot more options. So if I don't want it to start now, I'm not going to actually have time until uh, next Tuesday. So next Tuesday, about 10 a.m., I will start the reservation, and then I can either say for the duration, or I can give it a calendar event again. So let's say I just want it for Tuesday, 
let's say eight hours. So now the reservation will start next Tuesday at 10. It's going to go till 6 p.m. Um, adding recurrence won't do anything right now. Um, some people want to say, hey, I need a lab every Monday afternoon. Um, we have an issue with the recurrence right now. We'll probably get that resolved soon. But if you choose uh, recurrence, which very few people do, um, it'll actually just say it's not enabled at the moment. Now, some people want to come in here and name their labs. Uh, I don't know if you noticed earlier, but I had named my, my previous reservation, hey, this is Dan's APIC lab. So I can go and name this particular lab reservation, whatever I want to in here, and then in my reservations dashboard or whatever it will be, it will indicate that particular name. Um, again, you don't want to change this here. That will just, that will actually change the lab that you're reserving. So if you came into this lab, you're like, I want that lab, don't change that last field. So I am not going to hit the reserve button. Well, let's go ahead and see if it's available. So one or two things will happen at this point. You'll either get back a success uh, box that says, OK, we have successfully made that reservation. And then when you go into the reservations view, you would be able to view it. Or if that lab is uh, not available during that time frame, you'll get a message back that says, sorry, not available. And it will give you the next available time that you can make that reservation. All right, so we have, actually, we have successfully made the reservation. It says that is pending. So let's go back to our reservations view. And I'm going to go to the list view. So here's that reservation I just set up. If I want to go get more information about it, I can click out here and it'll show me more. So it'll show me the start time, the end time, that sort of stuff. So that's sort of my tour of driving the sandbox and making reservation and connecting with devices. Um, Hopefully you can see that you know, once you find a topology or a, uh, a lab that has the resources in it that you think are interesting, you can see once you've been through it once or twice, connecting is actually pretty easy. Um, one of the things I didn't go over was what an always-on lab looks like. Let me circle back and, uh, and do that one real quick. So an always-on lab, you do not need to make reservations. And what you'll get when you, when you choose one of those labs is you'll just get information in that, in, uh, in that instructions pane off to the left, everything you need to know about how to connect to it. All right, this CMX Cloud Service Simulator is actually an always-on lab. So if I go click on it, so everything I need to know about how to connect to this resource is provided over here. And you'll notice there is no reserve button. It's not reservable. It's available. It's available to anybody. And typically, you're just going to be making sort of some sort of RESTful API call. So that's sort of my, uh, my walk through the lab. Hopefully you can see that it, it's not that difficult. Again, I would, I would emphasize the one tricky part is when you've made a reservation and you want to go view your reservation lab, make sure you go to the reservation dashboard and click on your reservation. That'll take you to your instance of the lab.
All right, I'm gonna give you three places to go get more information about the sandbox. The first one is developer.cisco.com slash sandbox. Very easy to get to from the, the DevNet homepage. There, are, there is a sandbox learning lab. You know, up the front of the, the auditorium here, you've got the, the train tracks going around and all the, the stations there. You can do a learning lab and it will take you through and show you some of the things that I did if you want to sort of be guided through that process. Um, and the last one is right in front of the next classroom over, literally just right there, uh, we've got the sandbox booth. That's gonna be manned for the duration of Cisco Live. Um, so if you have any questions about whether Sandbox can meet your particular needs or how do I do this, whatever the question is, it's going to be staffed for the rest of the show, so please stop on by. Let's have some conversations, um, and hopefully you, know, you all can, can find something that is useful. Again, let me go over just our goal, is we want to give developers the environments to go and develop. Sometimes setting up labs is hard, it's expensive, and it's time consuming. We want to give you guys the ability to go do things fast, have robust environments to do that, and that's why we've provided the sandbox. With that, I think I've got about five minutes or so for questions. All right, if there's no questions here, again, I encourage everyone, you can uh, come talk to me afterwards. Um, and again, Sandbox booth is right there. You can grab me here or just a couple of stalls down. Um, and thank you all for stopping in. I appreciate your time.